So we welcome all the Hyven 19 partners. I will not take the name, but I will welcome everyone here on this service. And we are so blessed to see everyone who are connecting. And we know that there are still more will be connected as the time is coming. So we were going to start the service now, eight o'clock, and it will be opened by the worship with one of our worship leader, Atejo. So Atejo, worship open in prayer and worship lead the worship. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, brethren. Good evening. We believe that everyone is blessed for the whole week since Tuesday, last Tuesday. Well, glory to God for, for everyone's life. We are now gathering for our online worship uh, service, the midweek worship service. And we welcome once again our uh, guest from Highway 19. Before we start, let's all um, put ourselves into a attitude of prayer. Hallelujah, Father God. Lord, thank you so much, Lord God, for this wonderful night that you have given us, O oh Lord God, Lord. Thank you once again, O oh Lord God, of reminding us, O oh God, for this fellowship, O oh Lord God, with you tonight, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh God, Lord, that he poured out his life upon us, O oh God, Lord, that we are able, O oh Lord God, to live with you, O oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. Thank you so much for, for your unending, unending love, love, O oh God, Lord. Thank you for, for your love and mercy, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. We glorify your name, O oh God, Lord. Lord, we thank you because you are the most high, O oh Lord God. We thank you because you are here for us, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, O oh Lord God, Lord. For always, O oh Lord God, being with us, O oh Lord. We thank you for the life of each and every one, O oh Lord God, that is gathering tonight, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, because even though it is virtual, O oh Lord God, you have allowed us, you have made a way, O oh God, to gather us together, O oh Lord God, once again, O oh Lord God. And for the rest of of the time that uh, there's no um, physical gathering, O oh Lord God, Lord. In Jesus' name, we uh, nullify the works of the enemy that hinders us to uh, this worship, anything that um, hindering us tonight. We believe that our God, Jesus Christ, is here to intervene for each and everything. In Jesus' almighty name, O oh Lord God, Lord, we lift you up, O oh Lord God, all our uh, prayers tonight, O oh Lord God, with you alone. In Jesus' almighty name we pray, amen and amen. Before we start, let, uh, allow me to read this text from uh, Book of Psalms 95. Chapter, uh, chapter 95, verse 1 to Three. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Uh, verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great, God, and a great king above all gods. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, O oh Lord God. Yes, hallelujah. Let's trade our sorrows, our pains. Let's trade our sickness, hallelujah. For He is there for us. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. For the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. So by a prince, but not a curse, persecuted, not a bundle. Stop down, but not destroyed. But I'm blessed beyond the curse for his promise. 
Open eyes, our open our eyes to the things unseen, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, oh Lord God. Show us how you have loved us, oh God. Because for everything we have, for everything we have is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, oh Lord God. The highest. Sana in the highest. Sana in the highest. Coming out of the clouds with fire, the polar shades, the polar shades. I see His love and mercy rising over all our sins. Thank you. 
glorify your name, O God. We give you back all the glory, all the adorations, all the honor and power, O Lord God. It belongs to you alone, Jesus. We glorify your name, the Most High, for you deserve all of this. This we pray in Jesus' almighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Ate Joe, for the worship, and thank you for each and everyone who came. Once again, we welcome all our partners, all our brothers and sisters in Christ, and even the Highway 19 partners. I know they are also joining from every part of the UAE, and also they are also coming from part of the Oman also. I can see Ate Grace, she's, she's the pastor from Oman. And we all welcome you all, and thank you for joining this Highway 19 dedicated fellowship service because what God is doing is a great and mighty thing, right? Six years back when we when we came into this ministry, as personally I, when I was came and Pastor Avon introduced to me Highway 19, I was completely blank what this Highway 19 is all about, you know? But today we know that Highway 19 vision that God showed to Isaiah is for this land and we are all part of that vision and we need to do our part in that vision to be fulfilled, right? We never imagined that UA will open its door for Israel and Israel will open its door, right? A, a greater enemy of each other. Now God 
is doing something and he did it and he brought them together. That the, and God is exposing the work of the enemy also, but at the same time also we have to understand God is in control of everything. So this is a special service that we are dedicating it and we have decided that from last month we started every last month of the Tuesday it will be a dedicated service and we will be inviting all the body of Christ and all our partners, you know, we'll, the speakers will be all our uh, Highway 19 partner speakers will be there who has really impacted our life, who has been blessed us with everything, you know. So today the speaker that is going to speak the word for us today, who will be blessed us with the word is today. And he's known as Dr. John Bishopal, right? His name is Dr. John Bishopal. And I know many of you have seen him personally. Many of them have met him also. And as many of them also not seen him also, right? So this is what he is. He, Dr. John Bushibal actually is a Lebanese, but he's, he's been now residents in the US. He's been, for a long time, he's been in the US. And he received the honorary as a doctor for his humanitarian service into the Middle East, helping the people who have lost everything and they are doing the humanitarian service, especially into the Middle East. And where you know where is the Middle East in the Middle East? When I'm not talking about Middle East, he's doing the ministry more onto the area of Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and all the affected places, you know, where where we are not even to we are not even trying to go there also because we say, oh, why I'll go there? There is so much of chaos is there, but he has been, God has been used him. He's been also a director of the world mission, but today he's a president of a ministry called VAM, which is witness a ministry, and he is leading this ministry with his family and with his all team. He always visit the Middle East. He is the man who has touched the life of Pastor Evan in the Hong Kong. He was the one who was preaching in Hong Kong and where Pastor Evan, he doesn't want to go to Hong Kong, but I don't know why God took him to Hong Kong that time and his wife and he were there and they were invited by someone to go to one thing that one uh, seminar that the event was happening. And when he went there, he talked about the Highway 19 and then Dr. John Bushy will talk to him and his life was touched and then with the anointing that he received, he came with that back into the UAE and then he started in UAE that he, we were connected. Now we are all connected to him, almost six years plus we are there in the Highway 19. And Dr. Jan Bushibel also has runs the ministry, is called the uh, WAM and his heart, you know, I will just give you his heart is to see the peace. His heart is to see the justice has been done to the people who have been affected. He's been looking into that area. And you know, by the way, he's, he's the oldest among all, and it inspires us, you know, whenever we saw Dr. John in Bushable, when we were in Turkey, we were in uh, uh, Armenia and Georgia, and then when they, we see the light, he is the, grand, the age is like a grandfather, he's almost 70 plus, and you see the strength and energy that he has for the Lord. He, you know, sometimes we young people are not so energetic, the way he is energetic into the ministry and God has anointed him. And I will not take much of the time because it's the time to share his the light and he's going to share the word of God and he's going to bless us today. So let's welcome Dr. John Bushibal for our today service. Can we give a clap offering on the virtual clap offering that we can have it? Over to you, Dr. John Bushibal. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Good evening to you all. It's so I'm so blessed to be able to worship with you this evening. And uh you are precious to God and you are precious to me as well. I love you dearly. Though I haven't met all of you, but I pray the day will come when we will be all together, sitting around the throne of Jesus. Well, uh, Pastor Bavesh, thank you very much for granting me the opportunity to worship with you today. And honestly, it's a great privilege for me. I always look forward to worship with my brethren in the United Arab Emirates and beyond that. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you about a verse from uh, Psalm 51, 17. And uh, why I want to share that with you. Let me share some background about my life. I grew up in a Catholic orphanage from the age of eight, to 14. And uh, I was educated with all the rituals and all the traditions that the Catholic Church uh, teach, you know, children. And one of the things that uh, I have learned was 
I had to do uh, to learn how to do my confession and the booth of the church to a priest. And for those who have an idea about it, you know, you you tell your priest what what the wrong thing you have done. And at the age of uh, you know between <laughs> ten and fourteen, uh, young people don't have big sense, but they have little sense. And I would tell the priest what I have done, and then he would counsel me what what uh, to do, and then he would ask me to recite Psalm 51, which I had learned by heart since my early age. But I would recite it, but like a parrot, not meaning any word of what I was saying. And then the priest would tell me, you have to pray so many uh, of the Lord's prayers and so many Hail Mary and go in peace. Well, but when the Lord found me as his lost sheep, and I started to read the Bible, it meant a lot for me because I was reading in the sense of meditating upon the word of God. So the question is how to see God with a broken and contrite heart. And that's based on that verse of Psalm 51, 17, which says, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. After King David is confronted with his sin with Bathsheba, he writes Psalm 51 and offers a sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, you, God, will not despise. David is writing out of despair over his sin. But is this something that we should repl replicate in our daily lives? What does it mean to offer God a broken and contrite heart? It's quite possible you have heard this verse of scripture before. You may have even applied it in some way or fashion to your life or circumstances. To gain true understanding of this verse, it requires an answer to the question, what is a contrite heart and spirit? Psalm 51, 17 says, God won't despise this. So clearly this is something we should have or desire to have. If there is something that we can offer to God that he wants, then that is absolutely worth investigating. I believe grasping the full meaning of this verse will require us to consider it from two perspectives. So let's get started. What is a contrite heart and spirit? Perspective one means surrender to God's will. There are few key words in this verse and let's examine what they mean. First, broken, comes from the Hebrew word meaning to break or break in pieces. Contrite comes from the Hebrew word meaning to crush. Heart comes from the Hebrew word meaning inner man, mind or will. Spirit comes from the Hebrew word meaning breath or wind. Let's put all of these definitions together so we can understand what a contrite heart and spirit really is. A contrite heart or spirit is when a person, inner man, or will has been broken so they no longer run after the worldly sense. They won't. But to surrender to the things that God wants a broken heart or will says, I will no longer do this my way or no on my terms, but I will surrender to your ways, Lord. This type of heart that is fully surrendered to God, he will never turn away. God always welcome the surrendered heart to him. I know conceptually that may make sense to you. However, how does it look in real life application? In practical sense, this may mean 
surrendering your career choices, your ministry choices, your marriage choices, basically running every aspect of your life through the seed of God's purpose and plan for your life. There is a verse in Romans 12, 1, which I have memorized a long time ago, and it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Paul had encouraged the church in Rome to really offer themselves as a living sacrifice. And in fact, that's what we do. As long as God gives us life, we submit our life and present it to him as a living sacrifice. What is also important in this verse are the words, my sacrifice. Sacrifice only works if you are willing to offer up something of real value to God. If what you are offering has no value, then it's not a sacrifice. Consider this question for a moment. Are you willing to lay down everything you are and everything you want, which includes your hopes, dreams, plans and your future are you willing yes friends god is no man's debtor we are willing and if you do god will make it up for you in many ways when you come to the place where you can lay down everything you want to take on what God wants for your life, you are offering something real, something of real value to God. It is any wonder that God would not reject his type or this type of sacrifice. What is the context of this verse? Prospective two, brokenness over sin. Wow, you know, the Apostle Paul said, Wow to me, who can save me? Who can save me from this wretched body of mine? You know, sin is surrounding us from all corners. And the evil one wants to undermine our relationship with God. So we need to be careful how we understand what a broken over sin heart means. Understanding the context of this verse will give us another way of looking at this verse and will help us understand even more what a contrite heart and spirit is. Psalm 51 was written after the prophet Nathan has confronted King David with his sin. And if any of you have, are, is not familiar with the story of David and Bathsheba, please read 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. To make long story short, David committed adultery with Bathsheba. And she got pregnant. He then had her husband killed to cover the track of his sin. Since no sin is hidden from God, Nathan confronted David. In his repentance, David penned Psalm 51. Within this psalm, you will see another answer to the question of what a contrite heart and spirit is. Psalm 51 is all about David being broken over his sin against God. When, when, when any one of us sin, we're not sinning to each other. We are sinning against God. We are sinning against the spirit of God in that person that we have sinned against, which is another aspect of a contrite heart. How do you respond when you have sinned? 
David was crushed in his spirit when confronted with his sin. This is the response to sin that God desires in you and me. I also want you to consider Psalm 51, 16, which says, you do not delight in, an, in sacrifice, or I would bring it, you do not take pleasure in burnt offering. God doesn't just want you going through some rituals that you think will appease to God, especially if it is dealing with repentance. Simply put, God, simply put, God doesn't just want outward transactions. God wants inward transformation. He wants our hearts transformed to be pleasing to him and to honor him. Sisters and brothers, if we are not careful, we can make the whole experience of serving God transactional. You read your Bible, you go to church, pay your offering, and do all the transactions, things that are required. The problem is the transactions can become ritualistic, almost like a checklist. Even though you may check the boxes, there is no real transformation. This is not what God is after. He desires a true transformation, which only comes when there is a change on the inside. Also, within the heart or spirit of a man or woman. This is what God is looking for. When you come with a heart that is crushed and broken over your sin, and have a true desire for repentance, God will never despise that. Let me even put it in plain language. God doesn't want your stuff or anything you can do for him more than he wants you and your heart. Don't bring your service, your gifts, your time, your talents, or your treasures unless you have brought your heart first. And that's what we need. God wants our hearts. He wants clean hearts, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. When you lead with bringing your heart your broken heart, you are bringing the type of sacrifice that God will not turn away. How wonderful to feel that God is accepting our offerings and is accepting our sacrifices. We are fortunate, those who uh, read the English, to be able to see the different translation of that verse in different version. When you look at this verse in other translation, you begin to see this verse in its complete meaning. It brings full clarity and answers the questions of what a contrite heart and spirit is. I've been able to capture the, this verse in six translation, and I'm going to read them for you. And I don't know if you have different translation in Tagalog or any other languages available to you, but in Arabic, we have a limited number of translation, probably three or four. But the English is so rich. So I'd like to read first the Amplified Version from Amplified Bible Version which says, my only sacrifice acceptable to God is broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. The Christian Standard Bible 
reads, the sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit. You will not despise a broken and humbled heart. The contemporary English version reads, the way to please you is to feel sorrow deep in our hearts. And the you is in reference to God. This is the kind of sacrifice you won't refuse. The easy to read version says the sacrifice that God wants is a humble spirit. God, you will not turn away someone who comes with a humble heart and is willing to obey you. The messenger version has the longest verse, which reads, going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless performance is nothing to you. I learned God worship when my pride was shattered, heart shattered, life's ready, ready for love. Don't for a moment escape God's notice. God's notice. And the last verse is from the Passion Translation Version. The foundation of your pleasure is found in the sacrifice of my shattered heart before you. You will not despise my tenderness as I humbly bow down at your feet. And bowing at God's feet is a blessing to us. And how often do we do it? I love the Chinese groups very much because when they are worshiping and they are praying, you know what they do. They don't sit in armatures and comfortable armatures. They sit on the floor with the cushion, which is probably one inch high. And they sit for three hours. I had the privilege to attend prayer meetings with my brethren, Chinese brethren, when I was in California for three hours from six to nine every morning. But I used to come only once a week. Three hours they are on the floor, either kneeling or squatting on the floor before the Lord. What does it look like for us to have a contrite heart and spirit? When you consider Psalm 51, 17, there are two questions we need to think about. I believe how we answer them will give us some insight into what's going on in our hearts. Sorry, I thought I had put my phone on silence, but it keeps disturbing me. So the first question is, the first question is, what is your attitude towards sin in your life? Second question, what is your attitude toward the following God, towards following God's plan for your life? What God desires is a heart that is contrite, a heart that is crushed, over any presence of sin in your life and surrender to the plan he has for your life. If you will live your life with these two things at the, at the forefront, if you will allow them to guide how you live and how you make decisions, you will put your heart in a position that God will never ever despise. Let me repeat these two questions, please. These are two important questions. First, what is your attitude towards sin in your life? Two, what is your attitude towards following God's plan for your life? More and more as I read scripture, I realize it's not about just getting the facts right or gathering information. Please don't get me wrong. It's extremely important to get the facts and information right because they do matter. 
What I'm discovering, however, is that facts alone are not enough. After all, what I'm discovering, however, is that facts alone are not enough. After all, didn't the Pharisees and the teachers of the law have all the facts? Didn't they have them? And they were challenging Jesus with the facts? What God is after is not just Christians who know the facts, who can quote all the verses, who may even know Hebrew and Greek. All that good, all that is great and wonderful. However, as wonderful as that is, what God is after is our hearts. Our hearts, our life, our being. The truth is, if your heart is not yielded, is not broken, is not contrite, then knowing the facts doesn't mean that much. Today, I'm challenging and encouraging you to be a person who knows the facts, but more importantly, who yields their hearts. At the end of the day, the yielded heart, which is your sacrifice, is the type of heart that God will never turn away. I'm going to quote a verse from Psalm 4 and 4, ch chapter 4, verse 4, which says, Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Biblical insight comes from meditate, med, meditating on scripture, not just reading it. Do we really take time to meditate? It's unfortunate, like I have known many, many people, many Christians, and when I ask the question, how often do you meditate on the word of God? And the answer is, well, we just read it. We just read the word of God. We try to apply it. We try to learn from it. But meditating is key. Take time, my brothers, to meditate. Take time, my brethren, to meditate on the word of God and let it, let the word of God dwell in you. Especially if you meditate on a verse in the morning or in the evening or whatever is convenient, whatever time is convenient for you. You will keep it with you all the time. I pray that you would take it seriously, that the word of God, upon meditating on it, becomes live in you, and you will be a blessing, something to share with many people as you are going in your ministry. Remember, you are his ambassadors, and you have heard me say that often. When I was still leading World Vision offices in the region of the Middle East, I had an open door policy. And I would have bishops come into my office and they would lock the door behind them. And after they sit down, after I welcome them, they would say, we are coming that you can pray for us and pray with us. At that time, I wasn't, I wasn't a pastor. I was an ordinary follower of Christ. But because of my commitment to be a change agent in the community where God had placed me, I learned to be a blessings to others. I need to be blessed first so I can pass on the blessings to others. I want to encourage you to be blessed. I want to encourage you to get the blessing from God on a day-to-day basis so you can share it with those that God will put on your way. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hiding and keeping to heart what I have shared with you. Let me close in prayer. Abba Father, Abba Father, we pray that you would open our eyes 
So we can see that the only way to find you is to stay on the road called holiness. Lord, you have called us to be holy as you are holy. To be on the road called holiness with companions named confession, forgiveness, and meditating on your word. Father, bless everyone on this call today. Bless our families, Father. Bless our children. Bless our grandchildren, the future of the church. Be with us, Father. Lead us on higher grounds, day after day. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 What a word it is. Very a powerful word that we have tonight to listen, right? Check our attitude towards the sin and check how we really follow in what God is calling us to do. With contrite, humbleness, and brokenness, God will lift us up, right? Amen. Thank you, Dr. John, for sharing the word and enlightening the heart of each and everyone here. I believe everyone has been blessed with this word. And I will give the floor because we still have a lot of time, little bit. So I will ask Pastor Evan. He's my lost brother, found brother in UAE. The moment we saw each other, God has done a great thing and the partnership goes on. And he's been a blessing to us. and. And he's been a great friend and a great pastor and a great man of God who's been lifted up by the Lord because he's humble and he's been doing the work of the Lord in it. So he will also share with us a little bit whatever God has put in his heart, a little bit about it. And he can share also about the things that he's doing, that they are doing it in the morning that we call Dawn Watch Prayer. He will just give a glimpse of the Highway 19, how it happened. Pastor Evan, to you, open your mic. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Pastor Babesh, and thank you very much, Dr. John. Once again, uh, we are sanctified by the word of the Lord. Really, every time <clears throat> Dr. John is sharing the word, I'm always uh, um, listening. But of course, every preacher that God is appointing, we have to listen, whether it's uh, Peter like or Paul like, whoever God will appoint, it will always sanctify us the word uh, <clears throat> in regards to highway 19 just an update um, we are doing our dawn watch for almost uh, we're approaching seven years now we thank god for the for his faithfulness uh, it's not a, an easy task to do but god has commanded us something so that we have to obey so we thank god for your faithfulness in the lord because our prayer that is uh, one of the main things that God has given to us. That's the strategy that God has given to us to pray. And we thank God that uh, for that six years, God has uh, blessed us with many partners. And now uh, simultaneously and in, in sync with many uh, dawn watch happening every Saturday. So may we invite you to, to join us every Saturday. The whole group are there, other nationalities from uh, different parts of the world. And by the way, uh, be, uh, maybe uh, Pastor Babesh, we can pray for what's happening for Azerbaijan and Armenia right now. Because just right now, I believe uh, Azerbaijan has made an attack once again to, to that uh, to that place where they are they are having a conflict so we thank god for the partnership and prayer and we know and believe that uh, our prayer will never be in vain our toil will never be in vain until the lord's return this is our cry the the soon return of our lord jesus christ and all of these things will be answered because of his presence because uh, we this is our blessed hope the final appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why we cry out every Saturday uh, from 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock we are crying. Maranatha, Lord come. Lord come to every situation. Lord come to every uh, place, especially in the heart of the people that we can all uh, see the coming glory that 
the Father has prepared for all of us. So once again, thank you very much and congratulations to everyone. Thank uh, you, Pastor Pavish. Pastor Irvan, you can take a chance to pray for Armenia and Azerbaijan that they will come to a conclusion and there will be a peace in that no more nurture. Pray, Pastor Irvan. Amen. Can we bow down and let us be in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and once again, Lord, we bless your holy name. We come into your presence, Lord. Lord, begging for mercy and grace. Lord, pour out your spirit in the region wherein, Lord, Armenia and Azerbaijan now are fighting. Lord, we pray right now in the power of the Holy Spirit that you will, Lord, pour out your peace, your joy, and your righteousness in the heart of the leaders of every person. Oh, Lord, we claim and we believe that this coming days, Lord, there will be a ceasefire. And Lord, we are looking for an everlasting ceasefire. Lord, the moment, Lord, they know, Lord, that there is hope, there is love available in you, Jesus Christ. Lord, we cancel all the lies fear and doubt being in, inflicted right now by the enemy, by the power of your blood, Jesus. Lord, we cancel all of these things. Oh, Lord, may your grace pour out in these places, in the place wherein they are having fight right now. Lord, I pray for the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Lord, touch their heart, open their heart. Oh, Lord, we know, oh God, Lord, that you will accomplish your will and your sovereign plan because your sovereign grace is about to happen right now. We claim that and we believe that. Father, we thank you. We pray for what we believe because we pray in the powerful name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And as we also like to give you some updates, uh, one of the updates is that every Saturday, actually starts 4 30 a.m and it's goes till 7 a.m and everyone is welcome to come and as a pray because prayer is very important because bible says if a church will pray things will change right so we are the church we need to pray right because things can change and that's what we are doing it from last six years more than six years so uh if you need uh, information on the zoom link or anything that's approach and we will be posting this information in our chat group so that you can join the Maranatha Down Watch Prayer every Saturday 4.30, right? You will we'll be part of it. Second announcement is that we have, a, this is the body of Christ, so we will be doing a three days united fasting, a solemn fasting and prayer that will begin on October 3 in the evening, 8 o'clock, and it will end on October uh, three, four, five, six. I think I believe on the 16th evening or the Wednesday evening it will be end by eight o'clock. This is again an upper room. I believe many of you have been there. It's an upper room prayer uh, and fasting because we are being given a burden, and all the leaders in the city had this burden in the heart that there is something what the WHO is claiming that there will be more deaths coming in in the October and November month, if the vaccines are not rolled out, though there, is a, there is a power struggle that is happening in the leadership of the whole world, then they are struggling there. They are neglecting the third nations and many things are happening. But we know that when the church as a body, when they come and pray, because we don't have solution for this, but God has a solution for this. And we need to come together in this fasting and prayer. It will start on October 3. So everyone, all the information will be given. After the service, we will be sending the information in the chat group so that we can all, as a body of Christ, can solemn fast. We can fast however the Lord leads you. Let's fast, let's pray, and the prayer points will be given, and we will pray together. This will be happening in the next month, October. There also we are going to pray. There is also an announcement. In the December, I think, 12, there will be a Highway 19 International Summit. That will be a virtual summit. And it will be on the three, there is a three hour sum, the international summit because every year we're doing it. And I am announcing that we have a three, actually four speakers who will be speaking on that day. And you will be so amazed that there is a speaker is from the Israel, he's a rabbi and he's a pastor also. There is a speaker from Egypt, 
He's also a doctor. And there is a speaker from the Asherian line, that is John, Dr. John Bushibal. He is also there with us. And then international also, because we are all international, we are part of it, and we will be also be into the using then there will be a speaker also international that you will be speaking. So reserve your date, December 12th. That is your date, that is Saturday. It will start seven o'clock UAE time, and we will be doing virtual training. So all the information will be passed to you. Invite your friends, invite, because we want to make sure that we can yeah, do it. Yes, sir, and this is the time. Uh, I can ask Brian. Brian, can you play that video of WAM, if you have? Let's, let's have a time, uh, yes. Witness as Ministry, also known as WAM, has been operating in Lebanon since 2011 and has been active throughout the economic crisis and the pandemic, distributing supplies and providing support for the people who are seeing. WAM has set up a disaster relief fundraiser for those affected by the Beirut blast, and the money is being used to rehabilitate houses, distribute medicine, food parcels, and hygiene kits. At times like these, providing funds for teams supporting on the ground is very essential. Show us your support by donating at whamcares.org and offer a helping hand in rebuilding Beirut. Thank you, Brian, for playing that video. Thank you very much. And this is what the ministry of Dr. John Bishop is there. They are one witness ministry and they are they are really involved on the ground level to help the distress, to help the people who have difficulties and we have been broken into the wars, broken into the conflicts of the areas and they have no support, but they are on the ground, they are supporting. Dr. John Boshibal will be traveling even in this time, he will be traveling on October 10, you know, as he was talking about it, he will be traveling to Lebanon. And let's also pray. And let's also, anybody who has been, this is a service dedicated for the Highway 19. So anybody who has been today, as it is a giving time. So what I want to tell, whatever the money that we are going to collect today, if you're sending it, if you're pledging it, just send a message, you can do it, whatever it is, you can send it in the account. And whoever, whatever it is from today, for today's service that's dedicated, all the proceed will go further into the into the ministry of WAM, we will be sending it to them and they will be the one who will be putting it into the ministry there, whatever they're doing it. It's a very credible ministry and you are seeing how they're doing it. So it will all go for the good cause. As a church, as a body, we need to support the kingdom work because Bible says, because of your goodness, because the Lord's goodness, he gave you the seed. When you see it has been sown for the work of the Lord, many lives are changed. I just paraphrase it, many lives are changed, many lives are touched. One way is also to the giving also, right? And as a body, we need to stand together. So this is a time that I will be pledging and requesting that whoever has put in, even your one dollar will call, will be very important. Even you are more than one, it will be very important because all hands, when we put together, it becomes something good, right? So whatever we are going to collect tonight is will be proceed to the Highway 19. It will be to the Highway 19. It will be given to the VAM ministry that they have been doing. It will be sown for the rehabilitating that Lebanon people have been affected. Many Christians have been affected there. It will be going to the ministry that they are carrying in that. Amen. So you can send it either in the account. I can ask my account. I can give it to you. And if you're not, you can give if it's for uh, IV19, you can give it to Ate Aimi. Aimi also, if you're from our Chia, you can give it to Ate Hani, Ate Gemma. They will be recording it. And all the things that we are going to collect today will be used for the bank ministry. Are we excited for that? Right? So we will be even. Let's pray also right this moment. And also let's lift past, uh, Dr. Jan Bushival as he travels. Let's pray because he has the long journey that will be giving strength. Lord, we pray in the name of your mighty son. Thank you, Lord, for sharing the life of Dr. John Bushable has been a great inspiration to us, God. 
Thank you, Lord, even in this age that he runs and he continues, his heart is in the land to see the restoration happens in the life of people. He wants to see the justice happen in the life of people, Lord. People have been broken because of the conflict in those regions, Lord. And we know, Lord, as a body of Christ, we need to stand together. We pray for Dr. John Bushibur. Let your travel mercy be upon him when he travels on the 10th of the October. We pray the flight journey will be it will be safe. We pray that every strength that he will receive, he will receive from you because he understands and he believes the joy of the Lord, serving the Lord is the strength. And we pray more strength, physical strength upon him. We pray bringing safe and sound into the land of Lebanon. We pray the meetings that he is going to do with the high level meeting with the high denomination priest and, uh, and the people that he is going to meet. We pray that his heart is to see the unity that comes in this land of Lebanon, and especially the unity in the body of Christ of Lebanon. We pray also, Lord, your anointing will go with him, and we pray your presence will go before him and make every crooked way straight, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord, that every provision for his journey will be made in a divine way, Lord. Thank you once again for his life. Thank you for his family. We bless him. We bless his family. We bless the ministry. Thank you for his touching the life of many people around the world. And thank you, Lord, for the humble heart that you have given him. We praise, we give glory for the life of Dr. John Bushibal. And we also pray for the people who are going to sow today for the good cause. The cause is about your children. The cause is in to help one another. We pray that you will, everyone who has decided in their heart to sow, we pray you bless them and we pray God that you will always open the floodgates of heaven and you're going to mightily bless and release your blessing to them. Thank you once again, Lord, for all good things. We praise, we give glory. In Jesus' name we pray. So thank you very much again. And it's a wonderful time. And we have been together. And as I welcome everyone who came for the service. And again, every last Tuesday of the month will be dedicated service for our Ivan 19, right? And with the body of Christ. Next week, next last next month, in the month of October, Pastor Rebon is the one who is going to bring the word for us. And he is the one who will teach and give us the word. So, Pastor Ewan, I'm booking you right now. Okay. So, that will be the Pastor Ewan will be there to do it. So, thank you very much. And before we go further, because we still have a call, what we call a testimony time, I want to hear testimonies. You know, I want to hear that how, how Lord is doing in your life. I want that you now you will be the one who will encourage others, listeners, and us by your testimony that how Lord is working in your life. So, Anyone who want to testify the goodness of God, two or three people maximum, we are going to do it, and then we will close this service in prayer. Anyone here who want to testify the goodness of the Lord? Who wants to testify and the goodness of the Lord, that the Lord has done great things, you are not expecting, or you are expecting, or you are praying, and God has answered it. So lift and give glory to God. Anyone who is the brave one among all, Come on, everyone. Uh, we are feeling shy now. Come on, from Highway 19 team. Anyone? Don't want to testify? Then I will take this opportunity to Atisandi, you are there. Pastor Fred is there. I want Pastor Fred to pray. And this is a testimony, the way he prays. Okay? Let him pray. I wish you were to see my area. I wish you were to be the book of my area. I will kiss the book at you. Thank you. Thank you. You will go to the book of you. I wish you were here. I will be you big, eh? I'm pretty you big. Thank you, she will. Oh, what is she will? Yeah, you should be. What can you say? But what is she will be? What can you say? I can't even say. I'm doing it. 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 i am doing it 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 i
Portanto, ele né? é gay, foi de Ai, o bicho, 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 Amen. Amen. Now, when Pastor Fred Fred, I believe now that he is a living testimony, right? He's a living testimony. He has never given up in serving the Lord, praying the Lord, no matter what has happened in his life. He still is a blessing to us, right? He still is a blessing to us. Now, after hearing the prayer of Pastor Fred, who wants to testify? Who wants to testify? Come on, brothers and sisters, who want to testify? Is not God alive in your life? Amen? Okay. Just raise your hands and testify. Okay. Everybody is shy to testify. Me, bro. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I would like to give thanks to the Lord. Um, after a month, finally, I have uh, gotten hold of my new passport. Because remember, you told me to renew my passport. So finally, I have it. And then when I uh, passed my, my forwarded my passport to my employer, they immediately asked me to have uh, to go for a COVID test. So I did that. So I've got that last 27th. And then... Uh, the result was released yesterday. So when they got the result, which is negative, they immediately booked me for a um, medical exam in Abu Dhabi. So I had to go to Abu Dhabi this morning. So I had it done. So I pray to God that it will be all okay. So I could start uh, working for this company. And um, I cannot thank God enough for how he had moved in my life and still moving in my life. And I give glory to God. Amen. Thank you. For the information of all the listeners, she is Atetes, one of our workers. She is, has been in the mission in China. She's been to the mission in China. She has been there. She's a missionary. She comes from the Philippines. And one and a half year, she was without the job. She was still struggling. She was on the visit visa and on and off and on. And finally, God heard a prayer in this time of pandemic, right? Such a wonderful God. He answers your prayer where there is no hope. The people are, have no hope for the world, but he answers your prayer. And because he is a God who provides everything. So that's wonderful. That's also her birthday yesterday. Today her birthday, right? It's her, her birthday also today. So we yep. all <laughs> we wish you a happy birthday. And we pray that your journey starts in the Middle East. Amen. Anybody else who wants to testify now? Uh, bro, let me testify. Yeah, go ahead. God. Yeah, for, praise God. Uh, I just want to thank God because uh, two days ago, that should be uh, on Sunday, we, I met with my uh, boss because I stay in his place. And we do use uh, where I stay for our Bible study. So on Saturday, we were unable to hold a Bible study in my place because all family now has come to the villa I stayed. So fortunately for me, on Sunday, I met with uh, owner of villa and I told him that, uh, sir, every Saturdays we do old Bible study in my place here. Some Philippines do come and share the word of God with me and my fellow international brothers that please could uh, we still be doing the bible study in this place he now told me i got on there is no problem you can do it that uh, what time the the uh, bible study do elapse i now told him that from 8 p.m to 9 9 30 p.m so he said no problem so i'm so so happy and thank god that uh who am I to talk to a local man and said, uh, uh, ask for favor from him that we are going to use his place for uh, fellowship, Bible study as a Christian. So he just told me, there's no problem you can use. So I really thank God for that uh, opportunity and 
a grace that uh, really uh, God used in for me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This is our brother Gordon. He's from Nigeria. And we have international church and they're part of the international church and we are reaching them out. Thank you very much, Gordon. It's a wonderful thing that you directly ask a local man to give you permission to worship our God. Who's going to stop our that who's going to stop us to worship our living God? No man, no power on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else now? I will start the setting setting up for the Miko Ya Babesh. Go ahead, Maria. Um I just would like to thank God for an answered prayer. I have been praying for a long time that God would send godly men and women to reach out my family and my relatives at home who will share the gospel to them. And number one in my prayer list is my twin sister who has grown cold in the Lord for a long time. But I thank God because he never stops working and I thank God for sending an answered prayer because it has been my prayer that he will really send people, godly men and women who will um, share the gospel to them. And I thank God because this person that God sent is my twin sister's college friend that they were not um, able to see each other for more than 10 years. And this friend became a born again Christian who has been married to a pastor. And then to make the long story short, I contacted that person and asked her if she could join my sister in Bible study. And then she said yes. So now they are planning to start a Bible study in my sister's house. So all glory to God. I believe that God is working in ways that we cannot really imagine. Let us just continue to pray because God will really work on our behalf. That's it. All, all glory to God. And amen. Wonderful thing, God, is that God is also not neglecting our families. Any family members are not saved in your family. The only thing that you can do is to pray. Cry out to God because he will make a way for them to be received in his love. Anybody else before we close? Hello? Bro, me. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'd like to give glory to the Lord because I'm safely, uh, the flight was so safe and smooth from the Philippines and I, I'm so thankful to the Lord because he's given me the privilege to, um, spend three months in the Philippines. So I had, you know, the chance to be with my children for a long time and for all the provision that he's been, you know, He's been providing for the family and his faithfulness. And also, bro, I'm so thankful because even we are, I was in the Philippines, we were able to attend um, some Bible study online. So I believe that wherever we are, we can continue in our, you know, in our ministry, we can continue the Bible study. It doesn't matter where God will put us. He will always provide you know, the, the ministry for us so we can continuously grow. And I'm so thankful to the Lord. So all glory to God. Amen. Now, how wonderful God it is. In the time of pandemic, he allows her to go vacation. And that vacation <laughs> also paid vacation. She was been working from Philippines and she was being paid, right? And she Amen. had to be with the family for three months. Right? Praise the Lord. Our God is an amazing God. He's a loving God. Anyone else? Okay, so again, thank you very much for all of us coming together and taking a time to worship the Lord together. And this will go on, continue to go on. Even if we will turn back to the physical service, this will be a dedicated service for the Hybrid Night. So let's ask Pastor Brian. Pastor Brian is our core also of Hybrid 19, and he will close us into prayer. Pastor Brian, to you. And then shall we all close our eyes and let's all pray. Father God in heaven, thank you so much. We come before you with a broken and contrite heart. Thank you, Father God, for reminding us how to be broken. For reminding us, Lord God, that our inner being should no longer linger to sin, but to love your word and Jesus Christ, your son. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, as you release us tonight. 
Father, we pray that you purge out all sinfulness in our hearts. Make us clean, Lord God. Make it whiter than the snow. Father, we pray that you create our hearts clean. And Lord, we pray that you renew a right spirit within us, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you just make it make us like David, not on his uh, shortcomings and sinfulness, but Lord, make us a person that is after your own heart, Father God. And Lord, thank you so much for renewing our mind, giving us strength, Father God. And uh, we're looking forward, Father God, to, to testify all your goodness, your graces, and your mercies, Father God. And help us, Lord, to fulfill your great commission. You have called us, Lord God, to share your gospel. And we pray that you strengthen us, fill us, enable us by your grace, Lord God. And Lord, we are asking for more of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill us, Lord God. For the whole week, Father God, we pray that you bring us people, Lord God, to share the love of Jesus Christ. And may we testify, Lord God, on how you became broken for us so that we may become full, Lord God, in your sight. Father, thank you so much for making us whole again. And thank you, Father God, because your name is being glorified in our lives. We give you thanks and praise. In the most precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody can open your cameras, open your mic, and let's call as Pastor Avon does Maranatha, right? Let's read it out. Everyone. Pick, pick.